Good evening and welcome to the show. Today we're sitting here with Simcha Hirsch. Maurice. Maurice Hirsch. That he, would you like to present yourself? Okay, my name is Maurice Hirsch. I'm the legal advisor for Palestinian Media Watch. I was previously the head of the military prosecution for Judah and Samaria. All right. We want to talk to you tonight about the FIFA and the Palestinian Football Association and their fight to kick the Israelis out. Okay, so my involvement with this subject started just about a year ago. Um, to put it in context, about three and a half years ago, four years ago, the Palestinian Authority, um, via the Palestinian Football Association, started, initiated proceedings in FIFA to have Israel sanctioned and possibly thrown out of FIFA on the claim that there were six clubs playing in the West Bank that were affiliated to the Israeli Football Association and that they claimed was a breach of FIFA's rules and regulations which, which is say that one association cannot play in the territory of another association without that other association's agreement. Their claim is that their association is given or was given by FIFA full control over all football in all of the West Bank. And therefore, the Israeli teams playing in the area was a breach of those regulations. What area was that? In... So we're talking about the, the West Bank, what is known in Israel as Judea and Samaria. You're talking about the area which was part of the British mandate thereafter occupied by the Jordanian forces in 1948 and then returned to Israeli control in 1967 as part of the Six-Day War. Those are the areas that were subject to the Oslo Accords, which divided the area into, into three defined separate areas. Area A, which is under the control of the Palestinian Authority. Area B, which is joint control, Israeli-Palestinian control. And Area C, which is only Israeli control. The Israeli clubs, the six Israeli clubs, play in the area which is only under Israeli control. C. C. Area C. So in response to, to that claim and what appeared to be a looming decision of FIFA to accept the Palestinian demand to sanction Israel, Palestinian Media Watch got involved and we decided to approach the subject on two fronts. On one side, together with different NGOs, with other organizations, um, for example, the, the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies and UK Lawyers for Israel and the Lawfare Project in, in, in America, we submitted a defense document trying to explain to FIFA why the Palestinian Authority and the, the Palestinian Football Authority's claim was simply a lie. What we explained is that the Israeli Football Association was created in 1928 under the British mandate, admitted to FIFA in 1929, and at the time was given control over all of the territory that was then mandate Palestine. Which from, is even a section. Which is including everything from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. All of that was given to the Israeli Football Association. Um, when the area of the West Bank was occupied by the Jordanian forces, no, 1948. In 1948, no change in that status was made because it was an illegal occupation. Mm -hmm. When that area was retaken by Israel in 1967, the area returned to its original authorized football association, which was the Israeli Football Association. That goes back to 29. Which goes back to 1929. We also explained that the Palestinian Authority's complaint would would raise tremendous legal questions for all, all, over other, the world. all over the world. Anywhere where there was a dis disputed territory and there were conflicting claims, no football would be allowed to be played in those areas. What would happen in, in Taiwan, for example? What would happen with Morocco and its, and its, uh, and, and its occupation of, of the Western Sahara? Poland. Mm -hmm. All of these other mm -hmm. places, Russia and, and, mm -hmm. and the Crimea, all of these other places weren't being dealt with with FIFA and dealing specifically with Israel and Israel alone would be discriminatory because that was not FIFA's policy. Football should be football, politics should be fo politics, and never the two shall meet. FIFA, on the other hand, appeared to be entertaining the idea 
that Israel should actually be sanctioned. So the other tactic we uh, employed was to submit an official complaint to FIFA's disciplinary committee. The complaint was called Kick Terror Out of Football. The idea, what we showed in the, in the complaint, was that the Palestinian or fo football authority actively uses football in the Palestinian Authority to promote terrorism, to glorify terrorism, to promote racism, and to really avoid and deny any opportunity of using football as a bridge between the two countries. What we showed in the complaint, for example, was a news article from just after the 2014 war. November, a football competition is organized between Israeli residents from the south who had been the subject of the bombardment from the, the terrorist organizations and Palestinian children from the Gaza Strip. They played together. Their response was amazing. Both sides said, we wish that we could just play football together, that we would get to know each other. This is how you build friendship. What? This is how you build peace. When was that? That was in 2014. After, uh, uh, After the war. The war. The response of the Palestinian Authority was amazing. Jibril Rajoub, the head of the Palestinian Authority's Football Association, and the, really the Minister of Sports, a 50-year terrorist attacking Israel, defined that incident as a crime against humanity and threatened that any Palestinians taking part in normalization, as he calls it, would be subject to a criminal investigation and prosecution. That was his response. On to, the other to hand, that, to that to children's... that peace-building event. On the other hand, he was actively allowing Palestinian football teams, including winners of, of, the, of the Palestinian Football League, to show solidarity with terrorist murderers. In one case, the football team even held a big banner on the football pitch of the Lion of Ed Quds, as they call him, a terrorist who had just murdered two people. That was the way that they used football to promote and glorify terrorism. This, as opposed to the, the, the unfounded Palestinian claim, was a direct breach of FIFA's rules and regulations. FIFA's rules and regulations require that there be no discrimination, requires that there be no incitement to violence, requires that every team be treated with humanity and with respect. What, what was FIFA's reaction to that, like only this thing with the picture of that murderer, terrorist? So, so unbelievably, even though FIFA appears to be dealing with really serious incidents, but serious incidents which are minor in comparison to glorifying a, a, a terrorist murderer, for example, FIFA's mechanism and disciplinary mechanism dealt with an event where a fan of one team threw an inflatable banana onto a football pitch, black ostensibly guy. as a slur against a black player. The team, which had no connection to, 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 to really to the, to, the, to the supporters, was fine for that incident. FIFA's response to the glorification of murderers of Jews on the football pitch by the Palestinian Authority was unbelievable. Do you know what which it was? Went, no. Silence. It's been a year since we submitted the, report, the, the, the complaint. FIFA's disciplinary committee has done nothing. Nothing whatsoever. The only sign that we had seen that FIFA act, had actually read the complaint that then... was one thing. When FIFA's council decided in October to throw out the Palestinian authorities' request to sanction Israel, it said that it had decided not to sanction Israel or the Palestinian Authority. Sanctioning the Palestinian Authority or the Palestinian Football Association had never come up before. It was never a discussion. The Israel-Palestine Monitoring Committee set up under the auspices of, uh, 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 of, of Maxima uh, uh, Sexuale, of Tokyo Sexuale, was only dealing with the Palestinian claim. His report that was, there, that was later uh, uh, leaked by the Palestinian uh, Football Association dealt only with Israel. It dealt nothing in any way whatsoever with the breaches of the Palestinian Authority. It dealt in no way whatsoever with the institutionalized racism, with the head of a football association calling Jews, Nazis and, bar uh, 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 and 
barbaric murderers. It dealt nothing with the glorification of terrorists. It was FIFA looking only at Israel, set, set, really setting aside Israel as the only, as the only uh, 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 person that should be sanctioned. And that's how they that, that dealt with the subject for three years until Palestinian Media Watch got involved. And it appears that only our complaint, which was then submitted by dozens of other organizations, it was submitted also by other victims of Palestinian terrorism, people that... They're, from other they're, countries or... Also from Israel and from other countries, that their, that their loved ones were murdered by the, the terrorists who were glorified by the Palestinian Authority. They also submitted their complaints and also joined our complaint. FIFA did nothing. To this day, whilst Chelsea identifies anti-Semitism as something which needs to be dealt with, mm. if you saw recently the Chelsea footballers, but mm. the players went onto the pitch mm. with a big sign, no to anti-Semitism, kick racism out of football has been a long, a long-standing FIFA slogan. But when it comes to murdering Jews, when it comes to murdering okay. Israelis, FIFA is incredibly silent. It what? doesn't matter if you murder Jews. That's FIFA's message how, to the world. How do you world. explain that? I cannot explain it. I cannot explain how they allow that type of racism, that type of violence into football with no response whatsoever. So anti-Semitism in FIFA could just... I looked through... Uh, uh, um, in order to prepare the complaint and in order to, compare, uh, uh, to compile the, the, the different follow-up reports that, I, that, 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 that we wrote, I went over thousands of decisions of the different disciplinary bodies in FIFA. There is almost no mention of anti-Semitism. Which? Of black slurs, there, there, there are plenty. My and background apartheid. coming from South Africa, yeah. my, 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 my family were, were, were anti-apartheid uh, activists. Um, we left South Africa as refugees from apartheid. Black slurs are unacceptable and they should be dealt with with the most severity possible. But, but when, when it, it comes com to Jews, when it comes to murdering Jews, it's OK. It's OK. That's the message the Palestinian Authority has given. The Palestinian Authority, we showed in the complaint how every year in the next month or so, the Palestinian Authority will have an annual football competition in the name of Abu Jihad. Abu Jihad, according to the Palestinian Authority, murdered 125 people. Every year, for the last 25 years, the Palestinian Football Association has held a football com uh, competition in his honor. A mass murderer. Do you have, like, proof? We have, what's the proof that we have? The Palestinian Media Watch. What do we do? We follow the Palestinian media. Every year, there's another report in, the own, in their own official Palestinian media that this is the football competition that's been held. Abu the, Jihad. The pictures, the pictures that we have in the report, for example, of, uh, uh, of, of the, the, the murderer being glorified on the pitch um, was taken from um, the Palestinian media. It's not something that, that we've invented. It's not something that we've created for ourselves. It's something that, that we've taken their own pictures from their media and then shown them in the complaint to FIFA. And FIFA's response... Zero. Was zero. Look at this. This is, this is the picture of the, the Lion of El Quds, a murderer of two people, being glorified on the pitch by the football team. They were the winners of the league. Incredible. Mean, we'll, we'll have it. The head of the football association, a guy called Jibril Rajoub. Rajoub, yeah. Like I said, he's been attacking Israel for 50 years. He was on television in October 2015. Palestinian official television. It's something in the, uh, 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 that understand what it means, official television. Nothing is said without the permission of the, the Palestinian Authority. It's something that, that can be equated to Pravda of, of old uh, uh, Soviet, uh, Soviet uh, Russia, to the Iranian news uh, uh, agencies. It's completely controlled by the Palestinian Authority. Jibril Rajoub goes on television and says, in, two, in October 2015, after the knifing attack started, it's okay to kill Jews, but kill Jews in a smart way. Don't blow up buses in Tel Aviv. Not because it's unacceptable to blow up buses. Because blowing up buses in Tel Aviv is unacceptable to the international community. But if you kill a Jew 
in Jerusalem or in Judea and Samaria in the West Bank, no one cares. No, no one. It means the, the international, international community. community. The international community doesn't care. So go out, kill people, kill Jews. Knife them or um, with a car, uh, anyway. <coughs> kill them in any way possible, as long as you're not blowing up buses, because that isn't in the Palestinian interest. That's what Jibril Rajul called for. In the, the just three months after that, some 20, more than 20 Israelis were murdered. Direct incitement to murder Jews by the head of a football association, which then results in the murder of Jews. At the same time, his football teams that are members of the football association, that are winners of the league, glorify those same terrorists who murdered them. who had just murdered Jews, building on Jibril Rajub's incitement. Had FIFA followed its own rules, Jibril Rajoub should have been expelled from football for life. The Palestinian Football Association should have been at least suspended, if not expelled, from FIFA. And they should have incurred tremendous fines. None of that FIFA has done. Does, what does the Israeli Football Association do? Why don't they put a claim, like, kick them out? So the Israeli Football Association appears to be taking a line that football should be separate from anything else. The Israeli Football Association appears to be completely reluctant to take any type of stance against the, 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 the glorification so, and incitement, but is rather has really been on, at the time when we started with the, with the complaint, the Israeli Football Association, Association had been under a three-year attack. It oh. appeared to be getting very close to a situation where FIFA expelled. would indeed sanction, suspend, or even expel the, football, the Israeli Football Association. For they, what? They were completely on the defense for the unfounded oh, claim uh, uh, of the Palestinian Authority. But why don't you make a re-attack on the other side? Someone, who can do that if not the Football Association? So it, we tried to persuade the Israeli Football Association that they should join a, 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 our complaint, that they should submit their own complaint. There are two separate disciplinary bodies in FIFA. One is the general disciplinary body and, one is the, and the other one is the ethics committee. The ethics committee can only be approached by a member of FIFA. Of, the, of, FIFA, of FIFA, which is the Israeli Association. Which is the Israeli Football Association. But they, for their own reasons, decided not to get into that. Because they were sick and tired of being three years attacked. Because they were three years being attacked on, on, on an unfounded claim. They were getting closer and closer, despite the, the baseless foundation of the Palestinian claim. They were getting closer and closer to being sanctioned or even expelled. So they were just playing defense. And they didn't even consider, to, to our best understanding, going on, 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 on the attack. So the other discipline, which when you're not, if you're not a member of FIFA, how can you? So, so that was one of the things that I did. I took my, my background as being a prosecutor and I read FIFA's statutes. FIFA has very clear statutes. One of the provisions that I found there was provision 108, which says that any person can make a complaint to the disciplinary committee. We haven't seen that being used before. I found only one previous example of an external organization making that type of complaint. It was something which, even when we conferred with, with sports lawyers um, that are involved in sport, they said they'd never heard of that type of a complaint being made. Um, but that was really taking my background and saying, the complaint that we put in is really an indictment. That's what I did as a prosecutor. I wrote indictments. And so I took the, 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 the evidence that we have and put it into the indictment and found the provision in law which provided the basis for submitting the complaint. FIFA has never said that we're not accepting your complaint based on the basis that you don't have standing. You know if they got it. We 100% know that we got it because we sent it by Federal Express with, uh, uh, with proof, of, proof of receipt. All right. So we know 100% that they've got it. They're just not doing anything about it.
Did you nag them or did do you know we, anything about what's happening? We have been com continuously chasing them. I wrote a number of uh, uh, op-eds that followed on to the complaint. We are continually, continuously in correspondence with FIFA. It's one-sided correspondence. You're writing, simply, you're writing, writing, they're reading. I get some type of response which says, well, maybe we'll deal with it sometime, but really we're not dealing with it at all. Is that frustrating? Of course. It's very frustrating to see a, a, a football organization, which, for example, the case of the banana, which I described previously, was dealt with by FIFA within two months. With through big its, headlines. Through its different levels of, of disciplinary committees. Mm -hmm. Two months. From start from the event, and now to, it's gone like three years since. And, no. and now it's a year since we put in the complaint, almost to the day. I think we put it in. <coughs> excuse me, in March two thousand and seventeen, almost a year. FIFA has done nothing. Is there any way to to go by somewhere to get them to? So what we're now considering uh, uh, with FIFA is, is is a different approach. Um, FIFA contributes money, funds to the Palestinian Football Association. Contributing funds to an organization which glorifies terrorism is in many countries an offense. Yeah. They can't claim anymore that they don't know because they have all the proof in the world. So now we're just waiting to see if, the, if FIFA again this continue. year awards Money. International funds, funds paid by the members of FIFA to FIFA, again to the Palestinian Football Association. And then we're going to look into the option of submitting an official complaint to the Swiss police. FIFA is a, is a, is a, Swiss, is, uh, is a Swiss organization. Yeah. A, an official complaint that FIFA is financially supporting terrorism. the glorifying, glorifying of terrorism mm. and the incitement of terrorism. So... What can you do if you know that FIFA is uh, submitting money to the, to the Palestinians uh, Football Association for this year? What are you going to do? So, like I said, we're going to try and uh, investigate the option of putting in an official complaint to the Swiss police um, for funding terrorism and also consider other options. There are dozens of different UN decisions that limit the flow of funds for terrorism to support terrorism we will also consider using those different institutions there is a, a special UN rapporteur on terrorism and we will be approaching them as well mm. to ensure that as much is done in order to push FIFA to deal with the Palestinian Football Association as it should be the idea is generally to kick terrorism out of football Politics shouldn't be in football, and terrorism also has no place in football, in the same way as racism has no place in football. The, the, the organizing leader, leaders of uh, FIFA, who are they? So FIFA really is a, a, um, the representative organization of the different continental, yeah. continental associations. There's UEFA which uh, I think European, Sweden is part, of, yeah. is part of UEFA. That's the European. There's the Asian Football uh, 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 Confederation, which the Palestinian Authority is part of that. What about Israel? Uh, uh, Israel belongs to UEFA. So Israel, whilst geographically should be part of the Asian Football uh, 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 Confederation, it's actually a part of UEFA. And On the understanding that Israel wouldn't be able to play football in the Asian Football Confederation... Um, you, with, it, with, with all of the other teams like Iraq, Iran, um, Syria, Pakistan. Lebanon, yeah. and, and, and really countries that so aren't, can get aren't, up. aren't capable of putting football or politics aside just to play football. Mm. We've seen it numerous, uh, on numerous occasions where, where international teams and, 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 even, and definitely Palestinian sportsmen would rather relinquish any type of battle rather than play against an Israeli. So if we, if you said it's continent, from every continent comes one yeah. representative or two, whatever. So, so depending on the size of, 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 the, continent. of, 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 of the continent and the, the confederation, there's a different amount of 
representatives that, that join the uh, uh, that join what's called FIFA's council. There are two institutions in FIFA. One is completely political. That's the Congress, where every member country has a vote. That's where the Palestinians wanted to take their claim uh, um, against Israel, because there they're guaranteed a, 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 almost an outright majority, as they have in the UN. Um, like um, all the all the Asians, uh, all of the Muslims, Asian countries, uh, all of the Muslim countries, many of the the, the African countries as well, um, and they and they're, they're guaranteed a majority. Where and, and then FIFA has a council, which is really their, their executive committee, um, which is less politically inclined, but it's um, more, and and and, and appears to be more balanced and more sporting minded, um, and it's all headed by uh, uh, by by Infantino. Uh, FIFA's uh, uh, president. And who is P FIFA president? Uh, what is FIFA president? Do you know anything about FIFA president's ideas or uh, solutions to the Israeli and Palestinian problem? Did ever anyone talk to him about it? Um, the official response that we've read and that we've uh, uh, um, read in the, in, in the media, obviously, and of FIFA's announcements is that after throwing out the Palestinian complaint, FIFA's president wrote to even to the UN and said, leave football out of the picture. There's politics and there's football. We're not getting involved. So he appears to be on the side of separating politics from football. On the other hand, stopping our complaint could not have happened without his support. There's no way that it could be conceivable that none of FIFA's institutions would act on our report, given the evidence that we provided them, without the green light or without the okay of FIFA's president. FIFA's president must be involved in allowing the glorification of terrorists and the incitement to murder of, of, of Israelis and Jews by the Palestinian Football Association, because we know that he personally received our complaint, because we sent it to him separately as well, yeah, and I mean, yet he I, is doing nothing to deal with it. I see that book here. Deception. What happened with the money? Well, where did they get the, all that money and what happened with the money? So the Palestinian Authority is one of the largest recipients <coughs> of international aid in the world, if not the largest. They receive European money. They receive direct funds from individual European countries. They receive funding from Australia. They receive funding from Canada. They receive funding from England. They receive funding from America. That How about the Arab goes, countries? They receive funding also from the Arab countries in some instances. Um, all that money goes to the Palestinian Authority's budget. And the UN, of course. And the UN, of course. What we tried to show, what Palestinian Radio Watch showed, is that not a small amount of that money is then used by the Palestinian Authority <coughs> to pay salaries to terrorists. How it works is like this. A Palestinian commits a terrorist attack and is arrested by the Israeli authorities. From day one in prison, that terrorist then receives a salary from the Palestinian Authority. The more serious the offence, the more likely you are to receive a longer sentence. The longer you spend in jail, the more, the money. more money you get paid. After th up to three years, you get paid 1,400 shekel a month. After, from three to five years, that goes up to 2,000 shekel. And it goes up and up. If you spend over 30 years in jail, you get paid 12,000 shekel a month. Just for being, who spends 30 years in jail? Murderers. murderers. So if you're a murderer, because you murdered Israelis, you get paid a salary by the, by the Palestinian Authority. In 2017, this was incredibly 7% of the Palestinian budget. The, those salaries. The salaries to terrorists and for, for paying salaries to the, to the families of dead terrorists. You go out, you blow yourself up, you kill as many people as possible. Your family will then get a salary for the rest of their lives. Okay, so that's how the, the Palestinian sp Authority spends its money on. So when you're talking now, for example, the world is aghast at the, at the looming humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip. Because there's no funds. 
So there's over a billion shekel that is being wasted on to incite terrorism. Why do I say in, incite terrorism? Because we have proof. Palestinian terrorists who have admitted that they committed the terrorist attacks that they were convicted of in order to receive the salaries. One so, terrorist even said, I wanted to build a house. By working, I wouldn't have been able to, to raise that money. So I went, I committed a terrorist attack. In jail, I will be paid X amount of money. As a released terrorist, I'm entitled to a pension for the rest of my life. In seven years, I will have the money to, to build. build my house. Another terrorist was indicted for murdering a kid called Malachi Rosenfeld. They told us in their investigation that the guns that were purchased to kill Malachi Rosenfeld were purchased by funds that were paid to a terrorist by the Ministry of Prisoners. Funding directly terrorism. That's what the Palestinian Authority is doing. That is why we call it incitement to terrorism, an incentive to terrorism. And incredibly, much of the world understands that. Much of the world... when uh, uh, Understands and knows that. Understand and knows that. What do they do about it? Well, so there's been different approaches. When Palestinian Media Watch originally uh, um, highlighted the subject, many of the European countries said that we don't accept this, uh, uh, this practice. And they were putting pressure on the Palestinian Authority to stop the practice. What did the Palestinian Authority do? They, in 2014, they closed the Ministry of Prisoners that was technically paying the salaries. And they created a commission for prisoners, not in the Palestinian Authority itself, but in, under the auspices of the PLO. They then told the donor countries, we have closed the Ministry of Prisoners and we're not paying salaries anymore. What Palestinian Media Watch found out is that the same budget that was going previously to the Ministry of Prisoners goes to another was now just going to the PLO and they were continuing to pay the salaries and they they don't have any every European country knows it every European country is turning a blind eye they know that it's happening they think that it's despicable but it's convenient to just turn a blind eye recently we put out a report on the on the on the UK government granting 20 million pounds of aid to the Palestinian Authority a Palestinian minister said that went to the general budget of the Palestinian Authority. That general budget pays salaries to prisoners, pays salaries to terrorists. The UK government knows it. And, they and yet still... the UK minister just recently in Parliament said, we do not fund terrorism. They do. They're simply not telling the truth. So this 3% of, of the... 7%. 7%. No, I, I was thinking of... The amount the American stopped by giving UNRWA yeah. was at 3% or something yeah. like that. And then suddenly everyone <coughs> is starring. In... So UNRWA is, a, is also a, 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 an interesting case. The, uh, um, President Trump decided to, 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 to cancel some of the funding uh, to UNRWA. Suddenly there's a tremendous uh, uh, humanitarian crisis. What, the, what those same people refuse to accept is that UNRWA teaches the same school curriculum as the Palestinian Authority. UNRWA understands that that curriculum breaches its own duty of neutrality. They've said it to the Palestinian Authority. We have media reports from the Palestinian Authority which say that UNRWA was complaining about the curriculum. The Palestinian Authority told UNRWA, we don't care. You will continue to teach our curriculum. What does their curriculum say? Kill the Jews. The curriculum says that when you see a bus burning after, after Palestinians threw Molotov cocktails at it, we're having a barbecue. The, the Palestinian curriculum says, yes, that is in a Palestinian school book. Understand that, hear that. It's terrible. The Palestinian Authority school books have no recognition of the existence of the State of Israel. None. There are hundreds of maps. Not hundreds. Maybe a hundred maps in the yeah. different books. Yeah, I can see that. Th that's one of them. Look at that. That's a Palestinian Authority map. It's all Palestine. Israel does not exist. 
when Mahmoud Abbas t- tells the world, we believe in a two-state solution. That's what he just said. In, yeah, in, he means in, Jordan in, and then Palestine. Without question. He doesn't mean Israel. That's not, what he's, that, that's not what his education ministry is teaching the next generation. What's this other symbol on here? The, the other key. symbol is a key. What does that represent? Everyone has every the right of return. That's what the Palestinian Authority is teaching its children. Every Palestinian refugee will return to all of Palestine where Israel doesn't exist. That's what the curriculum that UNRWA is teaching. So when President Trump stopped funding UNRWA, he did it because the Palestinian Authority was attacking him and his decision to move the embassy to Jerusalem in in the UN. And the UN was supporting that. He should have been cutting the funds to, to UNRWA because UNRWA as an organization has documented ties to the Hamas. UNRWA as an organization does not support peace, is not creating an environment where peace can be fostered. UNRWA as an organization is devoting itself to one narrative and one narrative alone. Which is? Which is that of the Palestinian Authority that Israel should not exist, that every Palestinian refugee will return to his home no matter what. UNRWA is an organization, it's the only organization in the world which is specific to one group of refugees, only Palestinians. Every other refugee in the world... UN, H... Human, right? Human, uh, uh, refugee commission, uh, yeah. uh, commission. Only the Palestinian refugees come under UNRWA. And UNRWA itself, every year, shows how the number of refugees is growing. Because UNRWA is the only organization in the world that defines but refugees how come, how as come, second and third generation. Yeah, but how, yeah, how come they're, they're growing? They're, they're, if we said they had like 200,000 or 300,000 refugees, Palestinian refugees, 1948. 48. That grew that. in 1967. Now it's over 5 million people. So they claim. It's the only organization where a refugee can pass down that status so to I can his descendants. Hear. Syrian refugees that have left Syria running away from being gassed by Assad. They're, li- they're they a Swedish they're, they're citizen gone, now. They'll be given Swedish citizenship. The only refugee living outside of Palestine that will be able to hand down his refugee status are Palestinians. They're the only ones in the world. That's why... President Bush should have cut the, the, the support to UNRWA. Because UNRWA isn't part of the solution. UNRWA is part of the problem. And that we've seen, UNRWA understands that. Why does UNRWA understand that? Because in May last year, the Canadian authorities renewed its support to UNRWA. After a few years of cutting off its support. They demanded that UNRWA meet the requirements of neutrality. That's why UNRWA is complaining that the Palestinian Authority curricula breaches UNRWA standards. Hmm. Who do you think, according to, the Palestin- according to the agreement between the Palestinian Authority and Canada, is responsible to monitor that agreement? I don't know. UNRWA's own employees. Oh. oh. They're the Which ones is... who are reporting back that we're meeting our, our requirements of neutrality. And who are these people? They're the UNRWA employees. Yeah, but who are These they? are the, the, the people that are part and parcel of Hamas's control of UNRWA in Gaza. So uh, UNRWA employees could be Hamas snakes and... There's, there's documented okay. incidences and where these UNRWA are the, employees and he, suddenly went to be um, top Hamas... Uh, 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 um, the top uh, UNRWA, you mean? Top UNRWA top UNRWA representatives, then went to be, left UNRWA, and went to be top Hamas representatives. And then they're uh, bridging between Canada and... Uh... And they're the ones reporting back to the Canadians that UNRWA is indeed keeping up its, uh, its part of the bargain. It's the cat looking after the cream. So what, what do I tell the Swedish taxpayer that... Uh, this 65 or 70 million dollars aid to Palestine. Where does that go? 
Swedish taxpayers are funding incitement terrorism. to terrorism. They're funding the glorification of terrorism. If it's not funding, money is tangible. Yeah. So even if Sweden says, we are not going to support the general budget because they, the P Palestinian Authority pays money to terrorists, by giving support to other things, they're really freeing money for the Palestinian Authority to pay the terrorists. So, so my tax pay, uh, money in Sweden paying a terrorist that sits in Israeli prison and his family. 100%. And the glorification that goes on every day, every day of the year. You could say, let's, let's fund education. Britain says that, the UK government says, we fund education programs. What's the education? So they should look at what the education programs they're funding are. Yeah, I was reading about this, this David Binet, the, the, the books. Sweden should consider itself to be a consumer when they are providing funds and aid to the Palestinian Authority. They got to have they're, a receipt. They're, they're, What's they're, going they're on? Buying, they're buying a product. What is the product that they're, that they're trying to buy? They're trying to buy peace. But what they they're buying isn't peace. What they're buying is the continuation of the conflict. What they're buying is Palestinians murdering Jews. That's what they're buying. They should understand that. But don't misunderstand me. Palestinian Media Watch's uh, 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 um, position is not to stop all funding to the Palestinian Authority. That's not what we advocate. No, no, we're talking about the, what we, the payment to the... What we advocate and what we would recommend to every government in the world is continuing your donations to the Palestinian Authority. But make 10%, 20%, 30% of the aid conditional on tangible peace-building initiatives and demand a receipt. So, Something similar to the Taylor Force Act now in, in the, that's going through uh, 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 the government in, in, in America. We, the Taylor Force Act says that As long as the Palestinian Authority has a law and is paying salaries to, to terrorists... We're stopping it. We're stopping our aid. Once you stop that, that process, you can have the aid back. So, I'm 20 years old, Palestinian, live in Shechem, and I need to buy a car and this and that to my family. Tomorrow morning I go up and blow up a car or kill a soldier somewhere. And I know that's it. I got it. You've got it. You've got it. You've got a salary all the time that you spend in jail. To me and then to the family too. And, and, and that's also sometimes paid to the family, but it's the prisoner's salary. Um, having spent five years in jail, you then get a pension for the rest of your life. I'm a, I'll tell you a crazy story. I'm a prosecutor. I'm having discussions for a plea bargain with, a, with the, the, the lawyer of a Palestinian terrorist. I offered him, based on the severity of the crimes that, for which he'd been convicted, or he was about to be convicted, 50 months in jail. Just over four 50. years. 50. 5 zero. The defense lawyer came back to me and said, my client has rejected your offer. He wants 60 months in jail. <laughs> What do you mean he wants to spend more time in jail? Why? Now I understand did, did why. Did you tell him, did he ask him why? He didn't explain why. All right. Now I understand why. Because if you spend five years in jail, you Did then get, get the salary for all the time that you're in jail and a pension for the rest of your life. But if you only spend four years in jail, you have to go out and commit another terrorist another attack in order to fill in your time. It's terrible. It's, uh, uh, Once you spend three years in jail, you earn a salary higher than the average salary as a, work the, as a worker. Once you spend five years in jail, you earn more than any other Palestinian, almost more than any other Palestinian employee. And then, you, and then you get your pension for life. You're guaranteed... And we are funding that. And Sweden is funding that. And, and the world, the international... Sweden media. and the world is funding that. Everybody who donates to the Palestinian Authority, knowing that that is the case, whether they say that they're only funding... Other projects must know and must understand that the money that they are providing and they are contributing frees money for the Palestinian Authority, not to feed 
starving people in Gaza or to provide electricity in Gaza, but to pay salaries to terrorist murderers. That's what you're funding.